first. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Good morning, good morning. Oh, there I am.
Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Our gathering song today is Come Thou Fount, I Will Sing. Um, you can find it in your bulletin or on the screen. Would you please stand as you are able? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the Spirit moving over the waters. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ crucified and risen. God, who searches us and knows us, you have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive our sin and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, 
the Spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign of heaven. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Again, welcome to all of you, those of you in the sanctuary and those of you online. It's great to have all of you with us today. Uh, just for those of you in the sanctuary, if you'd take the friendship pad, fill that out and pass that down the pew, that would be most appreciated. And then, um, again, for those here in the sanctuary, um, if you would like to, um, you can take one of the prayer cards either in the pews or there were some in the back. Uh, fill out a prayer request, a prayer concern. Uh, write that down, and then we will pray those during our prayers uh, of the people. And so following today's sermon, I'll have the ushers uh, go through the sanctuary and collect those cards. Now I'd like to invite the children forward for today's children's sermon. Good morning, everybody. Come on up and join me up here. I'm going to sit up here, so if you're facing, can you turn and face this way? I don't normally bring my coffee up for a children's message, but today it's a part of what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> How are you all doing this morning? Good. It's so good to see your bright, smiling eyes. Well, do you guys like games? I have a little game we're going to play today. Are you ready? Okay. So this game is called Better Together. So I'm going to name something, and I want to see if you can tell me what goes really well with it. So here's an easy one. Peanut butter and jelly. jelly. Yeah. I mean, I like peanut butter sandwiches, too, but when I put a little bit of that homemade jam on there, they're so much better, right? How about this one? Mac and cheese. This is one of my favorites. Chips and, ooh, I always got to have some salsa, right? Do you guys like chips and salsa? Maybe not, because some... I don't like salsa. Don't like salsa, not yet. How about hot cocoa and... What do you like to put in your cocoa? Marshmallows! Marshmallows. Marshmallows. Yeah, they're so good, aren't they? Yeah. Especially the mini ones, because then they kind of melt and it makes it a little frothy. How about cookies and... Do you like to dunk them in some milk? Not so much, huh? Not so much. Not so much. I like cookies and milk. I like Let's test uh, everybody out there. Should we ask them one? Yeah. Let's see if they can say, see if they know these names. Fred Astaire and? <laughs> you don't know those names, but guess what? They know those two. They, those two go really well together, right? Yeah. How about a bath and? Do you like bubbles in your bath? Fill it up and get it really frothy and have bubbles. Cheese and crackers. The reason I brought this is because you know what I really like with my coffee? Some creamer. I do. I, I, don't, I don't like my coffee without anything in it. I like a little creamer in it. How about this one? These are my, some of my favorite kids' books. Do you know these two characters? Gerald and... Piggy, right? If you've never read these kids' books, highly recommend. And you've got to do it in different voices, right? Because Gerald and Piggy are both, you could do them, and, and they're so, they're good together, right? They're good friends. So there's a lot of things in our life that go better together. For me, I know that I am better when I have my partner in crime, my husband. He and I are a really good team, so we're better together because... It's not always so easy being, uh, like being a parent on your own, and so he and I are a really good team. We're better together. 
Let me think, I'm also a lot better when I get enough water and sleep and good food, so those things all go better together. But you know what the biggest thing is that's better together? Look out there. All of us. Do you know that we are all better when we're together? We can do things like... That we love God. Oh, you nailed it right there. Okay, children's sermon done. You can all go sit down. <laughs> no, <I'm> just... <laughs> we can really love God better, can't we, when we're all together? And during these last couple of years, we've discovered that now more than ever because... We haven't always been together, but we've had to do things together in different ways. But we do know that when we're together like this, we're even better because we can see you and I can say, good morning. And I can give you a little shoulder tap. And that's all really important, isn't it? Because we need to be together as a community. Yeah. So Pastor Bruce is going to talk a little bit more about that today. I bet you can think of some more things. You see if you can think of some while Pastor Bruce has his sermon today, and then after worship, I want you to come and tell me if you thought of any other ones that are better together, okay? So, today, I want you to remember that when we live in community, when we're together, that we can do a lot of incredible things together, right? That that is, that is the way God created us, is to be together. So, think about those people that you love spending the most time with, and then think about your church and how much they love you, and we're all better together. Can you do this? Oh, well, were you going to share something? What did you think of? I think of my mom's hugs. Oh, your mom's hugs. We are better with our moms and, our, and their hugs, right? So it's kind of like when you cross your fingers. They're, we're better together. We are. We're better when we can have hugs and when we can be in community together. So, let's, oh, did you have one more? Yeah. Yeah, when we love God and Jesus, we don't hurt others, right? Because we are better together yep. when we love God. Yep. That is so wise. Yep. And if you we have some smart kids here. Yep, and, and I'm smart. And did you know what? What? It's my grandma's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> you are better with your grandma and grandpa. Yes, we're all better together. To Oh, you'll probably have a wonderful celebration today. We're all better together. Yeah. Okay, let's close in prayer. Can you repeat after me and congregation you can join with? Dear God, Dear God. thank you for making me and my church. We are better together. Help us to work as a team to share your love and shine your light for everyone we meet. Thank you for loving us. We love you so much. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Can you say better together? Better. better together. Yes, we are better together. Thanks for joining me this morning. If you think of more, you let me know, okay? Our lesson today is from the first Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, <clears throat> which you in turn received, in which you stand, through which you are also being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, <clears throat> unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sin in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas then to the 12 then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time most of whom are still alive though some have died then he appeared to James then to all the apostles lastly of all as to one untimely born he appeared also to me, for I'm the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. 
but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation as you're able. The Holy Gospel for today is taken from the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. One day Jesus was standing on the shore of Lake Gennesaret, and the crowds were pressing in upon him, wanting to hear him teach about the Word of God. And he noticed that there were two boats that pulled up to the shore, and the fishermen stepped out, and they were washing their nets. And so he stepped into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked Simon to push him out away from the shore. And he sat down in the boat and he taught the crowds. Well, after he was done speaking, he said to Simon, Simon, push out into the deep and cast your nets. And he said, Lord, we fished all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you insist, we'll cast our nets. And so they did. And they got so many fish that their nets began to tear. And they they called their partners from the other boat to come and help them. And they began to fill their boats. And they had so many, so many fish that their boats began to sink. Well, when Peter realized who this was, he, he fell on his knees before Jesus And he said, Lord, depart from me because I am a sinful man. But Jesus said to him, Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And so they pulled their boats ashore and they let down their nets and they left everything and they followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Let's talk. Let's talk to one another. Let's talk to one another soon. Because I don't know about you, but I don't feel as connected to you as I did two years ago, just on the eve of the pandemic. And I know that one reason has been because so many of the things we do have been moved online or we put them on hold altogether. And I still believe that was the right thing to do because keeping each other well, doing all that we can to keep each other from getting infected is is one of the ways we love each other. That's what it means to live as God's beloved community. But it's taken its toll. I know I don't feel as connected, and I think maybe you have that same feeling as well. And so we'd like to do something. Uh, We'd like to begin over these next several months to do something called Table Talks, uh, a process of listening and discovering, gathering with one another. And uh, the name comes from something that Martin Luther and his dear wife Katie did at their home in Wittenberg, Germany, 500 years ago. Uh, Luther was a celebrity. He was famous all over Europe. And he would have people come to Wittenberg, to their homes, stay with them, scholars, dignitaries, and so forth. And they'd have students there too. And Katie would serve them all meals. And there's one artist's rendition of what that might have looked like gathered around the table, and after they ate, they'd talk. 
talk about God, talk about the scriptures, talk about the church, about their lives, about their faith, all kinds of things. And here's the actual table in Wittenberg that they would sit around. And uh, they spent time just talking about all kinds of things that way. And so um, Luther's students would take notes on what he said. And so years later, centuries later, actually, all of what Luther said, all the notes were gathered together in a volume called Table Talk. And it's one volume of Luther's works. Luther's works in German are over a hundred volumes, you know, volumes like this. The English translation is only 50 volumes of volumes like this. Just incredible that he could have done that in a lifetime, but he did. And the, this is kind of the most informal, the most intimate uh, of him just conversing with family and friends and, and colleagues. And so um, we would like to do something similar um, over the next couple of months is to gather together in small groups, groups of four to six, um, either in person or online. And um, they'll be hosted. I've asked staff to host. I've asked council to host. If you're interested in hosting and facilitating, let us know. But it's a chance to get together and really ask two questions. One, what have these last two years been like for you? Um, personally, as a part of Light of Christ? And how has this shaped your faith life, your spiritual life? But then we also want to look ahead. What do you hope for? What, do you, what have you learned out of this pandemic that you hope you will take forward as a child of God that will shape your faith life? And the same thing for us as a community of faith. How has this shaped us and what do we want to take forward? But also maybe what are some of the things we realize we just need to leave behind? So you'll be hearing more about this in the weeks ahead. But this is um, the first step in a larger um, visioning, planning, and capital appeal that we're planning. We just voted on that last week at the annual meeting. We're calling it right now, All Things New. And uh, in the first half of this year, we'll do the listening, the learning, the discovery. In the second half of the year, we'll do the strategic dreaming, envisioning, and planning. And then hopefully a year from now, we'll be in a position to launch uh, a major fundraising appeal to meet some of our capital needs as we go forward. And Tim Johnson from Kairos and Associates and also on our staff here will lead us in that effort. And you'll be hearing more about that as we go forward uh, as well. But I think an important first step in all this is simply to talk together. Because talking together has an incredible power. And I think the reason that it does, that talking with each other can be so powerful is because our voices express what's in our hearts probably more profoundly than anything else. That when we speak from the heart, we communicate what is deep within. We do because our words come from deep within us. We breathe our words into existence and you can catch a timber, uh, an emphasis, an inflection, all that stuff caught up in our voices. You know, when we want to have a heart to heart, don't we want to do it speaking to each other? I mean, you can do it in a letter, you could do it in a mail, email, I don't know, you could probably try in a text, but that's a pretty poor substitute. When I want to express my deepest loves, my highest hopes, my greatest disappointments, my most profound tragedies, I want to be able to talk to you face to face and listen to you in the same way. Speaking to each other is profoundly personal. I remember, gosh, 40 years ago now, I was a student at Valparaiso University out in Indiana. I was, it was my senior year, and one of my work-study jobs was to um, sit at the front desk in my dormitory, and I did this on Saturday mornings and a couple other times during the week. 
And uh, I liked it because it was early and nobody showed up and I could do my homework. So, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a nerd for you if there ever was one. Um, but one morning in the spring of our senior year, I was sitting down at the desk there at the, at the, in the lobby, and one of my best friends, Bill, came down. And he pulled up a chair, turned it you know, backwards and sat down, looked me in the eye, and he said, Bruce, I'm in love. And he began to tell me about Debbie, whom he had met the night before at a party. And he said, we talked until three in the morning. That's what people do when they fall in love. They talk until three in the morning. Because when we talk to each other from the heart, that reveals who we are maybe more profoundly than anything else. We need to talk to each other about the things that matter the most. That is one of the best things about being together and being a community of faith is to be able to have those, those conversations. Our voices reveal our hearts more than anything else. That's true for us, but I also believe it's true for God. It's no accident that when the Lord decided to enter human history and enter the stage of that world drama that we live in, that he used a human voice to announce his coming. Remember John the Baptist? And John said, the voice, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. God could have chosen other ways, right? God could have written a message in the clouds. God could have sent something on stone tablets. God could have put something on parchment. or God could have announced his coming in a fire or a tornado or a hurricane. All kinds of other options. But God chose a human voice to announce his coming. Because our voices are one of the most personal things about us. And the Lord wants a personal relationship with each of us. But even more amazingly, the Lord just didn't choose a voice. He became a human voice. The eternal God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, took on a human brain and a human body, was born of a virgin named Mary at a place called Bethlehem. God took on a voice. Because nothing reveals the heart of God more than the voice of God. St. John tries to get at that in his prologue to his gospel. And those first 18 verses of John's gospel are called the prologue. They're kind of an introduction um, for those of you who are uh, musically inclined. John's prologue is like an overture, you know, like you have an overture to a musical and they play snippets of all the pieces you're going to hear. Et That's what we get in those first 18 verses. And so John starts out with this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word is Jesus. That the eternal Son of God, second person of the Trinity, took on a human brain and body, was born of Mary, was named Jesus. This Word was at the beginning. That's where John starts. And then in verse 18, he goes on to say all these things about Jesus. And then at the end of the prologue, there's this remarkable statement. John says, No one has ever seen God, the only Son who comes from the heart of the Father. He has made God known. And so what John is saying is that Jesus is like this word that came from the heart of God, that that the Son was spoken into existence by the Father. Jesus is the voice of God revealing God's love because Jesus came from the heart of God. So do you want to know what God is like? We find that in Jesus more than any place else because he's come straight from the heart of the Father. 
we need to show and to say. That's what Jesus did. He showed us God's love, right? All kinds of ways in his healing miracles, in his feeding the 5,000, in his casting out demons, in his drawing into his community the people who were outcasts, who are the misfits, who, who didn't know if they really were loved by God. He joined them to himself. But he didn't just show it. He said it again and again and again. Go through the Gospels and you'll see how many ways that Jesus told the people who listened, you are a beloved child of God and so is everyone else. Don't ever doubt whether you're loved by God. I think he said it again and again because we can't hear that too often. We can't hear that we're loved too many times. I know that's true for us. I, I can tell you this, in all my years as a pastor, I have never had anyone come into my office and say, Pastor, my spouse is saying I love you way too much. It is really getting on my nerves. You've got to help me find a way to stop it. Right? Nobody ever says that, right? What I have heard is, Pastor, I don't remember the last time my spouse said, I love you. Same is true with our kids. We can't tell them too often. Now, <laughs> when, they're, when they're teenagers, right, they don't want you to do it in public, you know, gosh, you're just going to, oh, they just be so humility, humiliating, um, you know, just awful if, you know, you said you loved me in front of my friends. But when you're at home, nobody else is around. They need to know. They need to hear, especially when they're going through those adolescent years. I love you deeply and dearly. Never had a kid come to me and say, yeah, my parents just say that way too much. Whew, I am so tired of that. Can you get them to stop? What I have heard is grown children at a parent's funeral, say to me privately, you know, I know he loved me, but he could never say the words. We need to show our love, and we need to say our love. Because we are not only the Lord's hands and feet in the world, we are also the Lord's voice. We have this great joy and privilege of letting the world know how fiercely and how fully God loves each one of us. Our voices express our hearts more than anything else, just as God's voice expresses God's heart like nothing else. So let's talk. Let's talk together to one another. Let's talk to one another soon. Amen. Our song of the day is I Come With Joy. You can find it on the screen or in your bulletin or in your hymnal. Um, the ushers will um, circulate through the sanctuary and collect your prayer cards. So if you would send those down to the center or to the aisle, that would be much appreciated. Would you please stand as you are able? Yeah.
Please join your minds and hearts now as we confess our holy faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me now as we lift up to God our petitions. Lord God, we pray that you be with those who are struggling with addictions. Give them people in their lives who can help and strengthen them particularly be with Nicole and Christian as they struggle with their addiction. Lord, we ask your comfort on those who mourn the deaths of friends or family members. Be with them as they walk through this time of grief and loss and help them to cling to your promise of peace and life eternal. Dear Lord, family is better together, and so we pray for unity in all families. We pray for those who are traveling or commuting this winter. Please keep them safe. Precious Lord, as my grandma lives her final days on earth, grant her your peace. Prepare her heart for meeting Jesus. Comfort her sisters and brothers, sons and daughters, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Thank you for her love, teachings, and inspiration throughout her faithful life. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those with COVID-19 and all who are sick with it. We pray for all the healthcare workers who are caring for the sick who are so tired, for the scientists working on vaccines and treatments, and for the healthcare workers who are giving those vaccines. We pray God's blessing on all the children of the world, and especially our own children, that they come to know deep within that they are all beloved children of God. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your generosity to us, for blessing upon blessing and gift upon gift. Help us to be generous with all that you've given us, with our time and our talents and our treasure, so that others may come to know your unbounded grace. Lord, we pray for all who are sick in any way, in body or mind or spirit, and especially those of our own community of faith, we know need your healing touch. We ask your blessing on Ben Altenhofen and Eva Dinger, and we also lift up to you all those we know and love who are in need of your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray especially for all who struggle with mental or emotional illnesses, we pray that you bring healing and help and hope as only you can. We pray your blessing on our healing and wholeness ministry here at Light of Christ, that you use us to be wounded healers. Uh, help us always to turn to you for our wholeness and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up to you the things that weigh most heavily upon us, uh, upon our own minds and hearts.
Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. For offering today, you're welcome. If you brought your offering uh, in an envelope or check or cash, you can put that at the back um, as you leave today if you haven't already. And of course, you can always do it online. Uh, we've got that all set up. So I know many of you are give, giving online. So thank you for that. And thank you for your uh, continued generosity as we move forward. And so now I'd like to ask Katie and Lori Brown uh, to uh, grace us with our offertory today. Still my soul, the Lord is on my side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change, he faithful will remain. Still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful land. Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still
Thank you. Please join me now in our great thanksgiving as you find it on the screen or on page nine in your order of service. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Share in this divine meal because you are a beloved child of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now I'd like to give a blessing to our children who are not yet communing. Jesus loves you. May he bless you and keep you in his love now and forever. Amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. Please be seated. We've been fed by our Lord to be his living, loving presence in the world, so please take note of the ways we're doing that as a community of faith. Um, I want to thank our Boy Scouts who are here for their help in today's service and God bless you in your scouting. It's a wonderful program, and it's a great way uh, to grow into being uh, a young man. So bless you as you do all your scouting, uh, merit badges, and all that stuff. Then uh, this is time to start registering, believe it or not, for summer programs. So Bible Camp, uh, VBS, um, those things will be here before we know it. So I know it doesn't feel like it outside, but summer will be here soon. So um, we'll, we're going to be... Um, doing that here in these next week, next Sunday especially, we'll focus on Bible camp and Bible school and so forth, so, um, and our mission trip. So please begin thinking about that and, and making those plans as well. Uh, and then you're invited uh, following the service today. We have Sunday school for our kids, and then uh, I'm leading an adult Bible class in room 106 uh, called the Holy Spirit uh, in the book of Acts. And so if you want to learn more about the Holy Spirit, and what the Spirit did then and does now, um, please join us in uh, Room 106 for a four-week session on uh, the Holy Spirit. Now I invite you to stand for our send sending liturgy as you find it on page 10 or on our screen. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, 
support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of the Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are God's beloved.